Hi there, and welcome to my presentation, A Guide to Adrenal Crisis. This presentation is designed for anyone living with Addison's disease or adrenal insufficiency. If you're a family member, friend, or a coworker of someone living with Addison's disease, or if you are part of the medical community. Thank you so much for your time and for your inter interest in this information in this presentation on adrenal crisis. Now, the objective of this presentation is to first to provide you with a, an overview of Addison's disease and its symptoms, what life is like living with Addison's disease, an overview of an adrenal crisis, its symptoms, and how to manage the situation. And throughout the presentation, I'll also be providing you with some personal experience of living with Addison's disease and my experience of having an adrenal crisis. So let me introduce myself. My name is Jill and I have a rare life-threatening autoimmune disease. I have Addison's disease. My dad also suffered from this illness and he died of an adrenal crisis at the age of 56. It was six years following his death is when I was diagnosed with the same illness at the age of 35. I then vowed to have the best quality of life and to fight back against this debilitating illness. Education and advocacy are key to the quality of life of people living with Addison's disease, and there's very little support for us in regards to this illness. Now, what I am not, I am a mother, a daughter, a sister, and a friend, and I am an Addison's disease warrior, but I am not an endocrinologist, a doctor, a nurse, or medical professional of any type. The information in this presentation is simply information presented to the best of my ability and current knowledge. So please use it accordingly and consult your medical team for advice. Now, what is Addison's disease? Addison's disease, also called adrenal insufficiency, is a rare life-threatening autoimmune disorder that occurs when the adrenal glands that are located on top of the kidneys are destroyed by the immune system. And then what this leads to is insufficient amounts of essential hormones, life-sustaining hormones being produced by the body, which are mainly cortisol and aldosterone. Now, if we compare this to a type 1 diabetic, uh, type 1 di diabetics, their immune system has destroyed their pancreas. So in Addison's disease, the body has destroyed the adrenal glands located on top of the kidneys. Now, Addison's disease affects roughly 10 in 1 million people. Now, the symptoms of Addison's disease um, usually appear gradually over the course of time. So I was diagnosed at 35, and I can trace symptoms back into my early 20s or even into my teenage years. Now, some of the most common symptoms people experience um, with Addison's disease is abdominal pain, abnormal menstrual cycles, craving for salty foods, dehydration, diarrhea, irritability, lightheadedness or dizziness when standing, um, loss of appetite, low blood glucose, low blood pressure. Other symptoms also include muscle weakness, nausea, hyperpigmentation in the skin, sensitivity to cold, unexplained weight loss, vomiting, and worsening fatigue. Now, when I was diagnosed at the age of 35, since I was already educated on the illness because um, my dad had it, um, I, you know, I started putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. I started putting the symptoms together um, that I was experiencing. So I was diagnosed before I went into an adrenal crisis. So some of the main symptoms I was experiencing was salt cravings, muscle weakness, depression, hyperpigmentation. So it was the winter months here in Canada and my body was completely tan. My whole body had hyperpigmentation, sensitivity to cold, weight loss, and extreme fatigue. I was sleeping approximately about 15 hours a day. Now, what is life like for someone living with Addison's disease? So because of these deficiencies in the hormones, the cortisol and the aldosterone, someone that has Addison's disease must take replacement medication daily for the rest of their lives um, to sustain life, to stay alive. Um, and they're also at a risk of experiencing a life-threatening and adrenal crisis. We also have a hard time maintaining our sodium and our potassium levels in our blood. We have a hard time maintaining our electrolytes. And this often leads us to having a very high sodium diet. And we tend to eat a lot of pickles, which is why I've called my, my, my podcast that advocates and educates on Addison's disease, the Pickle Jar Podcast. People living with Addison's disease, we are lost in a shuffle of lack of knowledge and support in the medical community. We are desperate for a means to connect and to share and to validate our journeys and improve our quality of life. Now, what is an adrenal crisis? Now, adrenal crisis or an Addisonian crisis is a dangerous event that can be fatal if a person cannot maintain their cortisol levels. So what happens in an adrenal crisis? The cortisol levels in the blood reach to dangerous levels 
which causes the body to go into crisis. And immediate action is is required to prevent death. Um, an emergency injection is also is often administered of hydrocortisone in the thigh area, and a and a crisis could occur for numerous reasons. Common things are illness, injury, um, physical or emotional stress. Now, the major crises that I have experienced. My first one was just pure physical exhaustion that came on very suddenly. And the, the most recent one that I've had was due to an infection in my leg triggered the, the crisis to occur. All right, so let's talk about symptoms of an adrenal crisis. Now, every time I've had a crisis, the symptoms seem to be a little bit different. So it's very important um, that we are aware of our bodies and remind ourselves that symptoms are basically our bodies cry for help. Um, and I often think back when I'm not feeling well, trying to figure out if I'm going into an adrenal crisis, I try to remember what I felt like pre-diagnosis. And if those feelings are very parallel to how I felt pre-diagnosis, um, there's a very possible chance I'm going into an adrenal crisis. And for me personally, I always assume it's a crisis situation. Um, it's very, very essential that if you know someone living with Addison's disease or if you have Addison's disease, to remind yourself that this is a very serious situation that can get extremely serious very fast. So we need to assume that we are in a crisis situation. So some of the symptoms of an adrenal crisis are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, behavioral changes. Um, when I go into crisis, I get very highly sensitive to sounds, touch. I get very emotional, edgy. Um, I can even get kind of angry. Um, so my behavior often changes um, in a crisis situation. Um, confusion or difficulty speaking. Many people get slurred speech. You can get pale, cold, clammy skin or shivering. So I actually keep a medical, um, a winter hat in my uh, medical bag so that I can put on a hat to keep my body temperature warm. You get rapid pulse or breathing. Pain in your abdominal, back, um, in your flank or in your legs. Headaches, um, dizziness and lethargy low or high blood pressure. Now, this is an important one to highlight because typically in the medical community, they look for low blood pressure in an Addison's crisis. Um, I personally have high blood pressure in the situation. So it's very important to acknowledge that it's going to, it's possible to be high or low blood pressure, low blood sugar, fever, infection, and in very serious situations, seizure, seizures can occur as well. So now what do you do if you think you are in um, an adrenal crisis? Um, so first of all, you want to assess the situation. You want to get help. You want to call EMS. You want to call your advocates. You want people to know what exactly is going on and to decide if you require an emergency injection. And then you want to act quickly. Time is of the essence in this situation and you might encounter obstacles going to the hospital and communicating your information. So it's very important to prepare if you've decided to give an emergency injection to prepare to do the injection and get to the hospital as soon as possible. And then after you do that injection, yes, you want to seek medical help and go to the hospital as soon as, a, as possible to be assessed with the situation. So this is worth repeating. Um, in an adrenal crisis, it requires immediate medical intervention with an emergency injection. So whether you give that to yourself or you go to the hospital and get IV treatment, it's very, very essential. Um, my very first um, crisis that I had that came on from physical exhaustion, um, I was very fortunate when the EMS had arrived to my house. Um, they had just received days earlier training on what to do with adrenal insufficient patients. And my EMS, my paramedic told me that afterwards, that in the video and the training that she received days earlier, there was a mother whose daughter had Addison's that was in the video. And she explained that you do not need medical confirmation that somebody with Addison's disease is in a crisis. It's something that you can safely assume that if they're experiencing extreme symptoms and they're not well, this is an Addison's crisis and you don't need to know what the cause of it is. You just need to cr treat the situation at hand and that administering the medication isn't going to hurt them 
but not administering the medication and then receiving their emergency injection could possibly kill them. All right, so let's talk emergency injection kit. So it's very important that anyone living with adrenal insufficiency has an emergency kit at home, and it's very important that you take it with you and you have access to it. So what should be in your emergency injection kit? Um, I believe more is better. So we need some solucortaf um, actovials, um, at least two in case something happens to one of them while you are, you know, preparing your injection. Um, you want to have your medical information in there. You want to have instructions on how to administer the injection, um, you know, possibly for yourself or for the people that are with you that might be helping you might not know how to do it. And we all know in a stressful situation, um, we often tend to forget things. We can get very nervous. So we want to have as many things in place to make the process as easy as possible. Um, we want three, I use three millimeter, 22 gauge needles. And again, at least two in case something happens to them, gauze pad or cotton swabs, and also some band-aids. And then what are their other safety kit items you might want to have in there as well. You can have in there, like I said, I keep my winter hat in there so that I can, you know, be warm because I tend to get extremely cold in a crisis situation. So now let me try and walk you through as best as I can on how to actually perform an injection. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your Actovile. Now the Actovile has liquid on the top and powder on the bottom, and we need to mix those two together. So we actually need to mix our medication. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that yellow plunger and you're going to push on it super, super hard using a hard surface is probably the easiest. And that's going to push the liquid from the top into the bottom with the powder. The second step is we need to mix that solution. And the best thing to do is to take that and to put it in between your hands and to roll it. This is going to prevent as many, the least amount of air bubbles to, um, to develop in the vial. So we're just going to gently roll it until the liquid and the powders look like they're completely dissolved together. And then what we're going to do, we're going to remove the little yellow tab that's on top of the acto vial, and then we're going to sanitize it with one of our alcohol alcohol swabs. And then step number four is we need to fill our syringe. So we're going to remove the cap from our needle. And we are going to, there is a little rubber st st stopper um, in the Actovile. And we're going to, we're going to put that needle into that rubber stopper. And then we're going to turn our Actovile upside down. And once that Actovile is upside down and that needle is in the liquid, we're going to pull back we're going to pull back on that plunger actually before we put it in the active vial. And then when we put it in the active vial, we're going to press that plunger in and we're going to push all the air from inside the syringe back into the active vial. And then we're going to use that pressure and we're going to be able to draw the fluid into the needle. Okay. So we're going to do that. We're going to fill our needle, um, fill our syringe up with the solucortef. And then we're going to turn it upside down and we're going to press on the plunger to remove any air that's inside the needle. Now, if we notice that there's air bubbles inside the needle, we're just going to tap the, the side of the, of the syringe to release. And it's going to let those air bubbles come up to the top. And then we're going to press the plunger a little bit more until we see fluid coming out the tip of the needle. And then we know our injection is ready to go. And now we have to prepare the site of where we're actually going to inject on the body. So the best place to inject is into the thigh and you want it to go into the muscle. So what you're going to do is you're going to envision your thigh into three equal se sections and we are going to target the center section of the thigh on the outer part. And that, and you, then you're just going to take your alcohol swab and we're going to clean that area. And then we're going to spread the skin apart, make it a little bit tight, press a little firmly down on the area you're going to hold that needle like a dart and you're going to use like a dart like motion to inject the needle into the skin at about a 90 degree angle. So you want it to go into the muscle and then you're going to slowly push on your needle until the dose is fully injected. After the injection, you're just going to pull that needle out in the exact same direction that it came out of. You can use your gauze to cover up the injection site. You can massage it a little bit. You're going to clean the site and then you can place a Band-Aid on top. And then, of course, after we inject, we immediately, as fast as we can, we go to the hospital to be assessed on our situation. Because it is very possible um, that you might require more steroids. You might need um, 
electrolytes. There might be a lot of things going on. So it's very, very important that you seek medical attention. So yeah, so let's talk about that medical attention again. Um, I wanted to acknowledge here um, how concerning it is sometimes for people with Addison's disease to go to the hospital. Um, a lot of us personally experience a lot of anxiety because um, when we go to the hospital, because we are a rare illness, um, a lot of people in the medical community have never dealt with an adrenal crisis before, and we often experience delays. But it's so important that you go for your own safety. So what's more important is that you are prepared when you go. You need to be prepared to communicate because in an adrenal crisis, if you're going by yourself, you might not have the physical ability because of the crisis to communicate. So you need to have things in place for yourself and for your advocate to communicate effectively with the medical community. So now we are going to talk about my top, top 10 tips for managing an adrenal crisis. And I hope that these tips help you with that communication, help you with those hospital vi visits, help you in preventing crisis and help you managing a crisis situation if it occurs. So safety precautions, first of all, we want to try to prevent a crisis as best as possible, but we know that might not be possible. So we need to be prepared. Um, we need to try and lessen the severity of that crisis. We want to be efficient in a crisis situation. So we need to be organized and have all of our information in place. If you are alone, you might not be able to inject ourselves. So we need to be able to communicate with the medical professionals about our medical condition. Um, and then our advocates, we have to think about those advocates that are by our side all the time too. It's also a scary situation for them. So we need to be prepared to give them the best information that they can communicate for us so that they can do their jobs. All right, so let's talk about some tips. First of all, you need to get a kit. If you do not have an injection kit, that's the first thing you need to do. You need to advocate for yourself to get yourself an injection kit. We need to practice. We need to practice our injections. One great way to do it is to practice on an orange to, you know, you know, if you can get expired solucortef um, so that you're not wasting, you know, good medication. And then you can practice on an orange and it very closely mimics um, what it feels like to inject into the skin, into the thigh area. So it's not only important for us to practice, also for our family members and our advocates to, ad, um, to practice as well. So um, number three is prevention and lifestyle. So first of all, I'm a full believer. We need to take care of our health. We need to, um, you know, manage our illness, get proper sleep, um, nutrition, exercise, all those things so that our body stays strong and keeps us away from crisis. Um, we, you might also want to consider certain lifestyle choices, you know, social situations, um, different um, sporting activities you might take part in because it could lead to an injury, which could lead to a crisis. So learn your boundaries and, and play within those boundaries to keep yourself safe. Um, a medical bracelet of some sort should be worn at all times by somebody with Addison's disease because in an adrenal crisis, you're not going to be able to, you possibly won't be able to communicate for yourself. So one um, bracelet that I use, I use Road ID personally, but there's a lot of great organizations out there. So find what works for you. But with Road ID on my bracelet, I can have phone numbers and a lot more medical details than on a red, regular medical alert bracelet. Um, having a hospital bag, I think is essential. Now this bag, you want to have it to communicate for you in the event that you cannot communicate for yourself. So you want to have your medication list, you want to have your medication in there, an emergency kit, um, contact information, you want anything that you feel is relevant for you that you are going to need in a hospital visit in an, in an emergency visit. So I would look at it from the situation that if you cannot communicate, this bag has to do it for you and it has to do it for you quickly. Bedside pharmacy. Now, this is one of my favorite things that I have um, in the event of a crisis. My bedside in my top drawer on my nightstand is full of blood pressure monitor, oxygen um, monitor, um, there's Tylenol, there's injection kits, there's oral medication, um, there's a whistle so I can alert for help. And it just makes me feel more secure and safe. Um, if in the event I wake up or I'm ill, I can get help as fast as possible. Number seven is to educate and advocate for yourself. You need to know what to do in an emergency and you need to communicate with the people in your life 
what to do as well. And there's so many great ways to do that. We're going to talk about that a little bit at the end of the presentation, but it's definitely something, it's one of the strongest toolbox um, tools in your toolbox to, to manage a, an adrenal crisis. Um, contact your local emergency, contact your local emergency departments um, and see if there is a way to flag your account, whether that's through the paramedics or at your local hospital, so that when they when you come in, they have all the information ready for you and they can treat you quickly. Um, get yourself an adrenal crisis kit. Um, I will have a link and some information at the end of the presentation for you, but this is something through Team Addison's Canada. Um, we have fridge magnets and stickers and different documents that you can use to advocate for yourself in an emergency situation. Um, and then any other safety precautions that you can think of, you wanna put those in place. There's all kinds of great resources out there like Etsy and uh, just so many amazing things. So start building that toolbox of safety in your life. And like I said, you're gonna feel safer, you're gonna feel more secure. And in the unfortunate event you have an adrenal crisis, you are gonna be prepared. So what's next? So first of all, I would love to have your feedback on this presentation. I would love to know what you liked about it, any suggestions for improvement and any ideas for future presentations. I would love for you to send me a message. And if you are watching this on YouTube, I would love for you to leave a comment um, below the presentation as well. Share. Sharing is the easiest way that we can advocate for people with Addison's disease. It's an amazing platform, social media. So please share this presentation anywhere that you feel appropriate. You are welcome to use this information because I really do believe awareness saves lives for people with Addison's disease. And now resources. I have a list of amazing resources that can help educate and advocate you on your journey with Addison's disease. Now let's talk a little bit more about those resources. So first of all, you can find a list of websites and different links and all kinds of great things on my website, which is chronicallyfitcanada.com. So feel free to visit that for more information. And that's actually where you'll find the information on that adrenal crisis kit as well. Um, I have the pickle jar podcast. Um, the podcast is a podcast all about, it's all dedicated to educating and advocating for people with um, Addison's disease. So please tune into that. That's on Apple, Google, and Spotify. And again, sharing the podcast is just an easy way to help us connect people together with Addison's disease. Um, and the Chronically Fit Canada YouTube channel, um, you can go there and there's a lot of great um, information and resources there as well if you prefer watching a YouTube video. Um, so I would like to personally thank you so much for watching this presentation. And I do truly want to hear from you and I want to connect. So you can send me an email at the pickle jar at rogers.com. And if you would like to support my mission, this mission is completely right, right, right now is love ran on love and determination. But if you would like to support this mission of mine to educate and advocate for people living with Addison's disease, um, through these presentations or through the pickle jar podcast, a contribution of any amount would be greatly appreciated. They can be e-transferred to chronically fit Canada at rogers.com or you can find the, the pickle jar podcast GoFundMe page as well. So thank you again for listening to my presentation on adrenal crisis.